Coming in at number 10 is the repeal of the goods and services tax that was introduced in 2015, which was swiftly followed by the reintroduction of the sales and services tax or SST after a short tax holiday. This came with a 20 billion ringgit shortfall as the government had to cope with the change. Up next at number 9 is the appointment of Tommy Thomas as the Attorney General and Richard Melanjum as the Chief Justice, both members of minority communities. At number 8, we have the royal pardon and subsequent release of former opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim. He was pardoned from his sodomy conviction which he was sentenced to in 2015 and then went on to contest and win the Port Dixon parliamentary seat in a by-election. He also returned to his former post as the PKR president, running uncontested in the party polls. Number 7 for the year is much more recent, being the violent riots outside of the Seafield Sri Mahamaryaman Temple in Subang Jaya. Almost 100 people were arrested in connection with the violence, which erupted over a decision to relocate the place of worship. 24-year-old firefighter Muhammad Adib Muhammad Kasim was among those deployed to the scene. He was a firefighter who was attacked and subsequently died from injuries he sustained on that night. Coming in at number 6 is Malaysia's new cabinet after the 14th general elections, as well as the formation of the Council of Eminent Persons to advise the Prime Minister. This headline shared a spotlight with Pakatan Harapan's 10 promises for their first 100 days in power. Some of these promises were not met in time. At number 5, we have the infamous state-owned investment arm One Malaysia Development Berhad and the numerous books published about it that were launched in the time of this year. One common denominator with all all of the stories is the luxury mega yacht, the Equanimity. This vessel was alleged to have been purchased by fugitive businessman Low Take Joe with funds siphoned off of 1MDB. It was seized in Bali, Indonesia and handed over to Malaysia by the Indonesian authorities. At the present moment, 1MDB is still trying to liquidate the vessel. At number 4 is the story of the crumbling of the once mighty Barisan National. After their first ever defeat in the 14th general elections, the coalition began to disintegrate as member parties quickly exited. Today, they are left with just four parties. And moving on, we have the arrest of former Prime Minister Najib Razak and his wife Rosma Mansor taking up the number 3 spot. Both of them were later charged for offences related to 1MDB. At number two is a pressing issue that is still pending a proper solution, child marriage. The controversy was triggered when a Malaysian man was wedded to an 11-year-old Thai girl, triggering hot debate among netizens and politicians alike. Finally, the top story of the year as voted for by our readers is the 14th general elections. A truly historic event where Malaysia witnessed the first change of federal power in history, led by Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. are some honorable mentions, some who didn't make it into the top 10. Among them are the controversial past president Abdul Hadi Awang, embattled UMNO president Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, education minister Masli Malik, Warisan president Shafi Abdal and former finance minister Daim Zainuddin. Yes, they're all interesting figures which made many headlines but not quite enough to get into the top 10 newsmakers of the year. So now, without further ado, we kick off this countdown at number 10 with the recently retired Commercial Crimes Investigation Department Chief Amar Singh, who led raids on residences linked to former Prime Minister Najib Razak, most of which yielded expensive handbags and wads of cold hard cash in the millions. Next, we have former opposition leader and now the first female Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail, coming in at number 9. Next at number 8 is the former self-declared First Lady of Malaysia, Rosma Mansour. Then at number 7, we have Attorney General Tommy Thomas, the first non-Malay AG since the formation of Malaysia. Then at number 6, where in the world is fugitive businessman Low Tech Joe? Now he's usually referred to by his nickname Joe Low, but of late he also earned the moniker of The Whale after a book called Billion Dollar Whale was launched, covering his alleged siphoning of billions of ringgit from 1MDB. Malaysia's first multi-grains brand, the champion is Good Morning!
So now we go into the top five newsmakers of the year and number five is none other than former Prime Minister Najib Razak, dubbed as Malaysian Official 1 by the United States Department of Justice. I believe he needs no further explanation. At number four, we have uncontested PKR President Anwar Ibrahim, who is now Prime Minister in waiting for the second time in his political career. Our number three is best known for his remark this year that he considers himself a Malaysian rather than a Chinese. That's right, it's our first non-Malay finance minister in over 40 years and also former Penang Chief Minister Lim Guan Eng. At number two, we're looking at the greatest comeback in the nation's history. At the age of 93, former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad became the seventh Prime Minister of Malaysia, pulling off a miraculous and historic election victory. So, we're down to this, who is number one? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's me. It's also my boss, it's also the guys who live next door to me, the uncle who runs the shop where I usually have my lunch every day, and very likely, it's you too. The newsmaker of the year is all the Malaysians who cast their vote in the 14th general elections and brought about the biggest political change in Malaysian history.